Well, greetings again from Dr. Bill Wyatt. To, we're going to discuss a very important case here and a real idea of whether orthodontics is worthwhile or not. Somebody wrote something in that thought it was just too much trouble and he'd just soon not do it. So you be the judge on this. If you want to not do it, that's your own business. But to me, I had my teeth straightened when I was about uh, 10 or 12 years old, and I'm soon be 96, and it has been a bargain. It's, I've lasted all that time of my life with my teeth lined up in pretty good shape. So well, let's go through this case and see if it's worthwhile to do it. You be the judge. We're going to smooth transition now from upgrading molars in, in this child. The six-year molars were just decayed all to pieces. And we took them out, and it took quite a while to finish him. Of course, I had to wait for other teeth to come in and move back in place. And uh, you can see it through the case here. And this is my idea of certainly it's worthwhile to do and you uh, i don't i have been doing this for years and i've never found anybody that wanted to look terrible and have a terrible set of teeth everybody from the people in africa to anybody that i ran into wanted to look good and that's men and women too. Men a lot of times will say they don't, but they do care about how they look. So let's get going here. Uh, this is this young man, and I think this was back in 74 or something where early on when I was doing this. And here his teeth are. Yeah, this is 8 of 1974. And the I think he, you see how the, the teeth have things cupped out in them like this. There's, he had a high fever or something while he was young and when the six-year molars were forming, these teeth formed after the six-year molar and they have a defect in them, but they're not uh, messed up like the six-year molars were. Now, I patched up the upper six-year molars so I could use them for a while while we waited for second molars to develop. And I took the, uh, fixed the upper, but the lower I went ahead and removed. Now you'll notice the arch form is, is really not what you want to do either in here. So we took out the lower six-year molars uh, early on. Uh, this was in 74, at least I did or somebody else did, but I was getting away from doing any of the dental work and trying to do nothing but orthodontics back in 1970. Okay, here we, this was before we had the good bracket bonding material and we put brackets, I mean bands on the teeth and we were lining up just the upper anterior teeth to help the young man look halfway decent while we had to wait on the second molars to come in. So these are long acting cases. And somebody said, well, is, is it worthwhile to do this? And, it, and my answer is, you doggone right it is. I, I am glad mine took uh, a few years to do, and I'm glad I did it. So here we're working on a nine, it's nine of 74. We went in and we took the lower six-year molars out, but I used the upper six-year molars for a time, but they were broken down awful bad, and he had good second and third molars coming in, and so we kept them. All right, here we go. Uh, down on the bottom, we're lining that up, and we took them out earlier, and the second molars down there were coming in. Now here we are in 1977. This young man is pretty well finished up. And you can see what the teeth look like here, 1977. But I'm gonna go back 
on his on his uh, X-rays and show you exactly what happened in here. Now this is 1981. He's looking good now, and here is 81. Now the second and third motors take a while before they come in, so you got to be in there for a while. There's no way you can get around that. Now this is 81, and the, the second motors are, well actually this is your six, your second motors, the six year motors are gone. These are wisdom teeth that are coming in here in 1971, and we started this in 70, I mean 81, we started in 74. All right, that's a, that's the second and third motors are in that early on him. All right, here we're going to go through a whole series of x-rays on this young man. And this is 19, uh, I don't have the, I don't see a date on this, but I think this is 74 when we started. And the six-year molars were defective, and he had defects in other teeth. So he had a period of time when he was pretty sickly and uh, the teeth didn't form properly and the six-year molars were in bad shape. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to take those and keep them the rest of your life? Or are you going to extract them and let these drift just anywhere they will and leave the teeth that way? Uh, to, to my way of thinking, orthodontics is worthwhile and it's been a gratifying profession for me to be able to take teeth like this and people like this and carry them through and you look at this young man and we get through. You're going to let him stay like that the rest of his life just because you don't want to work on the teeth for a while. So I don't think that's good thinking at all. Alright, here's the second uh, time Fanerex we took. This is a year or two years later. We took out the lower because I could work with it. Uh, the second molars were in. We patched the upper up because the second molars up here had not come down in the mouth and I didn't want to just work on the front teeth by themselves. So I patched them up and we used them and then later we took those teeth out too. Okay, here's the third anorex. We've got this lined up now going pretty good and we're closing the space, bringing these tough teeth forward in here. And, and if you get this on an older person and you don't want these teeth to move back, you put a pin in the cortical bone here and bond it to the teeth. That'll hold these where they are while you pull the, the second and third motor up into place. And this old business of taking that out and putting false teeth in there and then throwing the wisdom teeth away. This wisdom tooth could not have probably come in if you had kept this tooth back here where it was. It might might have made it, but uh, it, it didn't and we don't have them. We, ha we have plenty of room for the wisdom teeth once the, the six-year motor's out. So it's just trading teeth. And why this is not really taught in many of the dental schools that, you, that teach orthodontics. And I don't know whether these schools that are going to be teaching orthodontics around over the country where they're going to touch stuff like this. Because you have to work on somebody for several years. And a lot of times you don't do much in the meantime. You just let the people they grow in. So here the lower teeth have coming in up here. We took these out late but they, came, they moved in faster than the lower teeth did. Now that's your six year, I mean your second molars. These are all second molars and wisdom teeth. And so these, these teeth are there. We're taking a little gamble that these would come in. But most of the time, very rarely, if they come in screwed up, then we can go back and set them, up, set them straight. Uh, I've done that old people be six or eight years after they finish, go back and correct a wisdom tooth, let it come in uh, mouth clear. All right, this, this is the fourth one. Here's the fifth 
one we came in, we straightened that thing up, and put it up, and this uh, second motor here needs to tilt forward. It'll come forward as the uh, wisdom tooth comes down in here. Now these two wisdom teeth are coming in. They're going to uh, be further along down here. And so you're spending some time. Let me see how long it took us to get to where they looked nice, you know. And this is the six Panorex we took. And this is just 1977 and we started 74. So three years time we had him at this point and we just took them off and we're going to let these teeth come in and they can come in and they change the position of the motor. Nowadays I would probably could bring that up better right there to start with. But here it is in 1977. Here it is in 1981. That is corrected pretty much where you wouldn't really notice it, just the pressure pushing the tooth forward. These are wisdom teeth, second molars. The six-year molars are gone. These teeth are good. The other teeth that came in the defective a little bit was not bad because it was later on that he apparently got over whatever dis the disease causes about. So 1970, I mean this is 81, and we started in 74, and so this is about uh, eight years that he's been, we've been working with him to get to this point. Now here it is in 1991, and look where this tooth is pulled back up. Very little space in there. This one is about as good as it could get. And this happened after we did the primary part of the work. In other words, we took out the bad teeth and we replaced them with good, sound teeth. We had to fill these. He had some cavities in them or somebody filled them. But this young man has a nice set of teeth now. And I think this is worthwhile. It would be to me. And here's the way he looked when we started in 74. That was the middle of 74. It was sticking out like that. And here it is in 1981. And it's looking really good. Here is the facial structure. When we started the young man, and there it is, his uh, profile and everything is still good. His chin could come out a little further. There it is, looking straight at it. Here it is, he was smiling before, and his front teeth stuck out uh, way out there. Now he's got it looking good. All right, here he is, 1974, about 81, and here he is in 91. A very nice looking young man with a nice set of teeth. And I'll tell you, is orthodontics worthwhile? You doggone right it is. And I don't have it. I've never corrected anybody and helped them along the way if they wish. I wished I had never started the orthodontics. So whoever wrote me this deal, I do not agree with you in one out of the way. Now that's the result we got. Here his teeth are in 1991. There it is in 74. There it is in 91. There it is in 74. 74 and 91 again. And look how we widened, we brought these back and widened this arch out, you see, like that even though we extracted the six-year motors. People would think you couldn't do your arch wire that way uh, if you took out these motors, but you can. And you can move these teeth out in a group and a bone goes with them. And these teeth, are, you, you'd take him to a hundred dentists and I'll bet you there won't be one or two that would say these are not six-year motors. These are second and third molars here. 
So this is what ought to be taught in dental school. That these things can happen and that's the way it ought to be treated. Don't go in here early on and patch up those teeth and then take out his wisdom teeth and leave the mouth all screwed up like that. All right, here in 91, we got a little defect down here. We didn't put enough uh, bar in here to hold that in place, but that's a very minor thing. And you can see the defect in this tooth right here. And if you look at it close, you can see it right there. Here's a defect in this one. Here it was. I can't see it there, but anyway, the defect is still in there. But those didn't go through the enamel. And those that he had in the six-year motors, they just ate the motors up. All right. This is orthodontics to me. And this is taking someone from pediatric or childhood to adulthood. And that's more important. If you can do it, and if it doesn't hold up, you haven't done it right. It's not the person, you know, that of course some people don't wear any retention at all, but we can put retention in there if they do it and then gradually come out of it till the mouth has had time to adjust to that position. Then that'll stay there. The thing that keeps teeth there is the pressure inside the tongue swallowing and everything that we do has to do right. If you're sucking your thumb, you're breathing through your mouth, you're having other deleterious habits, then you've got to have something counteract it or your teeth will move over the time. Thanks for watching and I hope you will join our group and subscribe to it. And this is an example that I and there's no question in my mind that if, it, if the teeth are almost straight and you want to, don't want to mess with them, okay, leave them that way. I don't, uh, in other words, I give people the choice. I mean, you, uh, here's what we can do. What do you want to do? What do you want to live with the rest of your life? I don't find anybody, even in the jungle in Africa, that wanted to leave their teeth screwed up like that. And so that's my personal opinion, and I'm going to sign out here and say, I hope you agree with me. If not, send me a note. <laughs> we'll answer them. I'm going to close up.